CS 310 Lesson 7. Today we'll be continuing the work we started in Lesson 6, looking at the force equals mass times acceleration equation and how that helps us find the kinetics related to the kinematics of these types of dynamic problems. Today we'll be extending that to the other two types of coordinate systems that we've studied. The NT, normal tangential coordinates, and the polar or cylindrical coordinates. For more information about this topic, see Hibbler's dynamics text, chapter 13, sections 5 and 6, and to review the NT and cylindrical coordinates, take a look at lesson 4. Just as a quick review of our coordinate systems. The rectangular coordinate systems are what we are most familiar with and what we used in the last lesson to implement the force equals mass times acceleration equation. The nor tangential normal coordinates are usually used when something is known about the path, which tends to be a curve. So you may know the radius or you may know the expression for that path. And then we would use the tangential normal coordinates to find the velocities and the accelerations. In this case, there's one component of the velocity, and there are two components of the acceleration, one that is tangential or along the curve, and one that is normal or towards the center of the curve, which is sometimes called the centripetal acceleration. In the polar or cylindrical coordinate system, we have a coordinate system that is fixed but rotates. And so there we typically know information about that rotation, whether it be the rotational speed or the rotational acceleration. In this case, both the velocity and the acceleration have two coordinates, which can be solved for so long as you can solve for r, r dot, r double dot, theta, theta dot, and theta double dot.